All right, class, let's start with the chapter 11 muscles of the lower extremity. All right. Now, just a quick review. Uh, <clears throat> you should know or be familiar with where all these are. So as soon as I say serratus anterior, you should be like, boom, okay, Bruce Lee, one inch punch, bam. Lats, extensor digiti minimi, biceps, delts, traps, sternocleidomastoid, pectoralis major, brachioradialis, flexor carpi radialis, palmaris longus. Now we're going to talk about glute me, TFL, rectus, pectineus, sartorius, adductor longus, gracilis, gastroc, extensor digiti, brevis here, soleus, extensor halicis, brevis, pronus longus, tib anterior, vastus lateralis, vastus medialis, external obliques we talked about last time, the rectus abdominis, serratus and lats. So you should be able to uh, be familiar with these and we're going to look at a few more uh, um, today. Oh yeah, who loves leg day? Look at that. That's that's impressive. You know, rectus femoris, vastus uh, medialis, vastus lateralis. That is pretty impressive. Adductor magnus. <laughs> All right, so the hip and thigh muscles, the large and powerful muscles of the hip that move the femur generally originate on the pelvic girdle and insert into the femur somewhere. So the muscles that move the lower leg typically originate on the femur and insert into the bones of the knee joint. So the anterior muscles of the femur extend the lower leg, but also aid in flexing the thigh. So they're two joint muscles. The posterior muscles of the flex flex the lower leg, which you call the knee, but also aid in extending the thigh that a lot of people call the hip. Okay, again, two joint muscles. So if you fix one, it will cause a movement at the hip. If you fix another, it may cause a movement at the knee. So it really depends. So a combination of glute and thigh muscles also adduct, abduct, and rotate the thigh and lower leg. Now, you've heard of the psoas or the iliopsoas. Um, okay, the iliopsoas is a combination of the iliacus or iliacus and the psoas major. A lot of times people think that they can massage this way in there. It's very uncomfortable. Again, this is deep within your pelvis. You remember you have a GI system right here. So you have intestines. You have lots of things that are covering this up. So if anybody says that, hey, I can massage the psoas for you, I think twice. All they're doing is massaging your intestines to be honest. They would have to move everything out of the way, which I just find very difficult to uh, comprehend so be careful there there might be just causing discomfort for no reason and then of course the placebo effect they're like oh man I feel great afterwards so uh, iliopsoas consists of the iliacus, iliacus and the psoas major both of which flex the thigh the medial compartment of the thigh contains the AD ductor. So you got the adductor magnus, pectineus, adductor brevis, adductor longus, and gracilis. Gracias. Now the psoas, this is a, a, a pretty darn good stretch for the psoas. So you're half kneeling, your hip is extended, and he's rotating, and he's going to get that iliacus. It's a great stretch. It feels awesome right in there. Okay, so it originates on the vertebral bodies T12 through S1. That uh, should be L5, sorry about that. Um, inserts into the lesser trochanter of the femur and the nerve supplies the lumbar plexus. The iliacus, iliac crest and fossa, sacral <laughs> ala, anterior sacral iliac ligaments. The iliacus inserts into the lesser trochanter of the femur and it dives into the psoas major tendon so they both insert into the same place it's innervated by the femoral nerve what are the actions of both well they flex the thigh when the trunk is fixed so you're standing upright it flexes the thighs like you're going up and down stairs and when flexes the trunk when the thigh is fixed sitting up in bed or doing a sit-up that's why i told you if you go too far up Right in a sit up or a crunch. Crunch is only the scapula uh, has come up, but the sit up, then really you're working your psoas major in iliacus and you're not really working your rectus abdominis anymore. That's why I told you the importance of not coming all the way up because if your thigh is fixed, then guess who takes over? Mr. Psoas, Mr. Iliacus, and they come, go by the name of iliopsoas. All right, now a lot of times these guys can refer pain to like your mid thigh, even the low back. 
So if you look at the trigger points of this psoas major, it's a big culprit in a lot of musculoskeletal pain, low back pain, thigh pain. Uh, I think a lot of athletes will get this uh, that run a lot. Um, but you can also have some internal organs that you would want to rule out if they had some kind of pain right in there. You could have uh, oroteric colic, which is obstruction of the urinary tract due to calcium stones. Um, basically, they're kidney stones. People will say that it's pretty much the worst pain they've ever felt in their entire life. Okay, muscles usually don't, they'll just scream. One will say it's worse than childbirth. Okay, and then an inguinal hernia is like a dull, nagging ache right in there. And men will get uh, inguinal hernia more than women because remember the uh, testes had to descend down. So there's a weak spot right there in that inguinal canal to begin with. Now, if you look at the glutes, um, probably one of the most important muscles in the body uh, to keep you upright, to propel you to walk. Uh, so make sure you don't skip out on glute day right now. All we do is sit on our glutes uh, with distance learning. So they're just getting uh, what we call glute amnesia. Okay, so the gluteus maximus extends and abducts the thigh. Gluteus medius and gluteus minimus abduct and medially rotate the thigh. Oh yeah, like, <laughs> that's hilarious. I mean, this is, this is not, uh, don't worry, it's all decent. That's just his uh, glutes right there. Okay, that's amazing. Look at the striations. Now that's glute day. He doesn't miss legs at all. All right, so the tensor fascia lata, or the, when you guys foam roll, your, your upper leg or upper thigh, really, it's your thigh. Um, that's what you're f foam rolling. It's the tensor fascia lata, iliac crest and anterior superior iliac spine, lateral condyle of tibia via the IT band. Uh, and the nerve is the superior gluteal nerve. So what does the TFL actually do? Well, it extends the knee and it laterally rotates the tibia and it also does hip abduction, abduction. Uh, gluteus medius and minimus, uh, they originate on the ilium. They insert into the greater trochanter of the femur, and the nerve that supplies them is the superior gluteal nerve. And what do the glute medius and minimus do? They abduct and internally rotate uh, the thigh. So if you want to target the glute medius and glute minimus, what you want to do is when you're doing uh, wall slides, you want to put your toes down a little bit. So you get the glute med and minimus, okay? Now, the gluteus maximus uh, originates on the ilium sacrum and coccyx, inserts on the lateral condyle of tibia via the IT band, uh, gluteal tuberosity of uh, femur. And the nerve is the inferior gluteal nerve. And what does it do? Well, the glute max, probably the most important muscle for stabilization in your body, extends the hip like you're going for stairs, a abducts the thigh, uh, elevates the trunk, extends uh, waist after being bending forward, deadlift, again, deadlifts are one of the best exercises to work the, the hamstrings and glutes and help stabilize the femur and the trunk. Now, here's the interesting, how do we get upright? So a lot of times people thought that it was development of the glutes that caused us to do that, but research suggests that a human-like posture would have preceded, preceded the appearance of the human-like musculoskeletal morphology. Human gluteal morphology, therefore, is a consequence and not a prerequisite of the upright bipedal posture. So meaning, when people ask what came first, the chicken or the egg, um, what came first? Did you walk or, or was it the glutes? Meaning, so according to research, it shows that we started walking and then the glutes developed. It wasn't that we had to have glutes in order for walking. Now, we talked about this very early. Can a human outrun a cheetah in a marathon? Of course, in a marathon, not in the first 100 meters. You will kill you in the first 100 meters, but in a marathon, yes, because again, uh, humans sweat and cheetahs don't. All right, so if you have glute medius weakness, if you look at glute medius weakness, you're actually have, let's say you have right glute medius weakness, you'll actually drop the left hip. Okay, so you can see how this can lead to ACL injuries, tears, ankle sprains, IT band, patellofemoral issues here. 
I call this the uh, the LL Cool J walk. Do you guys know LL Cool J? Lilies Love, Cool James, great uh, uh, great singer back in the 90s. But he had that walk. You know, he had that almost the gluteus medius walk. He didn't have. He probably didn't have glute medius weakness. He just had that cool walk. Uh, um, there's some research out there. What are some of the, the, the best exercises for the glute medius? Um, so I made a list here. They're sideline clams. You've probably seen these, but people do these incorrectly. They lean back too much. Really, you want to bring your uh, belly button down here and then do the clams. The sideline hip abduction, side planks, single leg deadlift, single leg balance, and then if you get advanced, I like to do these Copenhagen planks. Love these uh, Copenhagen planks. So these are the top five exercises for glute meat, and I would recommend this to all uh, um, women, especially that have patellofemoral and chondromalacia or ACL uh, weakness or knee issues. Um, there's lots of research that shows that the stronger your glute meat is, the less likely that you'll have uh, knee issues. Um, but yeah, let me let me share some of these uh, exercises for you. Let me show you what these are. Now, the sartorius, look at the sartorius right here. She did an amazing job of developing that. Uh, <clears throat> originates on and below the anterior superior spine of the ilium up here. Inserts on the medial aspect of the tibial tuberosity. So it comes in here and goes on the medial aspect of the tibial tuberosity right in there. So if you see the sartorius coming down and right in there. Um, innervated by the femoral nerve, aids in hip and knee flexion, like when you're climbing, uh, AB ducts, so, and laterally rotates the thigh. The gracilis, which would be right in here, if you see the gracilis, um, originates on the pubis, uh, medial aspect of proximal tibia, so that would insert there. The nerve is the obturator nerve, and it flexes and medially rotates the tibia at the knee, right in here. Now the quadriceps, which are your quads, uh, femoris extends the knee and consists of four muscles in the anterior compartment, rectus femoris, vastus lateralis, vastus medialis, and the vastus intermedius. Make sure you know what these are. So if you look, oh, get the rectus femoris, it originates on the anterior inferior spine of the ilium. Um, it's they all insert on the tibial tuberosity, so you'll find all their insertions on the tibial tuberosity. They form that quad tendon. Okay, remember Boogie Cousins tore his quad, Bill Clinton tore his quad tendon. Um, but the rectus femoris, since it's a two joint muscle, will extend the knee and flexes the thigh at the hip. It will flex the trunk if the thigh is fixed. So again, going back to doing crunches, well, you got the psoas that can help you, and you also have the rectus that can help you uh, bring your trunk up if you go too high. So you're just working quads and hip flexors, uh, um, you know, especially the rectus as a hip flexor that can cause some discomfort and tightness. Um, the vastus intermedius is uh, deep to the rectus femoris, anterior and lateral shaft of the femur. The vastus lateralis, which is here, greater trochanter and linear aspera of the femur. Vastus medialis is the originates the linea aspera and extends the knee. Okay, so all these guys, vastus, vastus, all the vastus group, they extend the knee. They all originate a little bit differently, but again, they all have a common insertion, which is the tibial tuberosity, and they're all innervated by the femoral nerve. So here's what a <laughs> quad rupture looks like. It looks kind of silly, huh? Uh, um, but that's what it is. Don't worry, I won't show you a video of a quad rupture. They're, they're pretty uh, gross looking. Um, but then here it is. You can see that. Look, there's there's a piece of bone that actually ripped off. Remember, your tendons uh, and ligaments are so strong, they'll actually break a piece of bone before the actual tendon or ligament tearing. Uh, that's how strong those are. Now the adductors, adductors, which are the groin muscles, we have the adductor longus and adductor brevis. They both originate on the pubis. Uh, they insert on the linea aspera of the femur, which is on the back there. They are innervated by the obturator nerve, and they both adduct. Well, obviously they're the adductors. Adduct the, the thigh now, the groin. Okay. Then you have a pectineus, which is higher up here. Again, it originates on the pubis. 
it inserts on the posterior aspect of the proximal femur. Nerve is the femoral nerve, and the action is flexes and adducts the thigh. Okay, so this one also flexes, but then an adducts. Adductor magnus, ischium and pubis, linea aspera femur. Obturator and tibial nerve is the nerve supply. So what does the adductor magnus do? It adducts, mealy rotates, and extends the thigh at the hip. Now those that go work out on the treadmill, again, there's nothing wrong with working out the treadmill, but if you had a choice between working on the treadmill and walking on concrete, walking on concrete or, you know, any kind of uh, grass, uh, the beach, is better for you because you'll recruit more adductor magnus and adductor longus to stabilize the hip and the trunk. When you go on the treadmill, the ground is moving for you. So a lot of times people that train only on the treadmill will not have a efficient adductor and then when they go out to play, uh, they may pull their groin. So that's the difference between training on level ground and training on the treadmill. But, you know, if you can't go anywhere, training on the treadmill is better than not training at all. So, but just something to be aware of that you should try to mix it up and not do only training on the treadmill. So again, here's a quick uh, anatomy lesson 101. Your pectineus is right in there. Your adductor longus is right here. Your adductor magnus is right there. Here's your vastus medialis. Here's your gracilis. Um, which is kind of combined with the adductor magnus, okay? Vastus intermedius is deep to the rectus femoris. This kind of looks like a tongue. That's kind of weird, huh? <laughs> and then you got your sartorius. And then you got the vastus lateralis. Amazing! <laughs> Oh, the hamstrings, the hamstrings. I love the hamstrings. People don't like the hamstrings because they're hard to work. Okay, but look at this guy. This guy's got some amazing hamstrings. Um, Semi-membranosis uh, originates on the ischial tuberosity, uh, inserts on the medial condyle of the tibia, collateral ligament of the knee, tibial nerve. Um, it, action is to flex the knee. Immediately rotate the knee when the knee is flexed. Immediately rotate the femur when the hip is extended. So bend the knee, immediately rotate the knee when the knee is flexed, and immediately rotate the femur when the hip is extended. So very interesting uh, combination. So you would have to work the hamstrings in different. Um, the deadlift, again, is probably one of the best uh, exercises to get the hamstrings. The single leg deadlift uh, is good for glute medius and uh, this one. So that's why I was showing you a single leg deadlift. Um, man, it's amazing. Semi-tendinosis, ischial tuberosity, medial shaft of tibia near tibial tuberosity, nerve, tibial nerve. A, flexes the knee, medially rotates the knee when the knee is flexed, medially rotates femur when the hip is extended. Okay. And then now we got the biceps femoris, which is the long head. Ischial tuberosity, short head, linea aspera, and lateral supracondylar line of the femur. Okay, inserts on the head of the fibula. And the nerve is the tibial nerve or the common fibular nerve, both of those. And the action, well, the biceps femoris, what does it do? It flexes the knee, extends the hip, elevates the trunk from stooping. And this should not be stopping. Oh, yeah, uh, it should be from stooping, uh, just like a deadlift. Uh, Lottery rotates the tibia on femur when the knee is extended. Lottery rotates the femur when the leg is straight. And eccentric control, love this, eccentric control of forward bending. Okay, so don't drop the weights. Eccentric control, slow it down. That's how you get half of the exercise, if not more. You want girth, you want hypertrophy, eccentric, slow down. All right, so let's... Uh, close this out by saying what's the best EMG exercises and again mean is for bodybuilding and peak is for better for sports specific so for the glutes you want the band scorcher hip thrust uh, the glute bridge uh, the hip thrust is great vastus lateralis you want full squats parallel squats band scorcher hip thrust so look at this band scorcher that's that's good stuff huh I'll show you what that is adductor longus Romanian deadlift single leg gliding curl high step ups Biceps femoris, you want to do the rack pull, deadlift, 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 right? And weighted bird dog. And then the gastrocnemius are parallel squats, heavy lever, 
or pause lever uh, cap raise. So that's just the standing stuff there. Um, but yeah, I mean, biceps, deadlift, 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 uh, the hack lift, the Russian Nordic leg curl. I'll show you those. Uh, but yeah, deadlifts, you can't go wrong with that. And then the deadlifts and the band scorcher hip thrusts. And so here's some other uh, great exercises. Here's the the deadlifts, of course. Seated leg curls. Now I like the seated leg curls are fine, but the seated leg extensions are no good. They put a lot of torque on the knee. But coming down to work the hamstrings is fine. But don't do up for you can get the quads a different way. Doing like the leg press or squats or lunges would be better. Here's the lying leg curls. That's fine. You just don't want your butt to come up or your back to arch. You want to make sure that that's uh, if if you are, then you're using too much weight. Remember levers and pulleys. You'll compensate. And then the standing uh, leg curls are a great way to isolate the hamstrings. Again, if you see your back arching, your butt sticking out, then drop the weight. Okay. Now, here's hamstring injuries. Here's RG3. Some hamstring tears will bruise black and blue from the hip all the way to the foot. So that's a bruise. This is not compartmental syndrome. Okay, but this is a bruise. There's RG3. He has so much potential. Huh? 